my name is Anika and I'm part of the data science discovery team and in this video today we're going to be doing a question on uh, functions and drawing queens and yes I am sitting outside so uh, you guys can enjoy the nice background so let's go ahead and get started so when I first define a function right I want to start off with my um, basically my function declaration, right? So it's like the header of my function. So in Python, it's always def, and then the function should be called draw queens, right? So it's just def uh, draw queens. And now we wanna decide if this function, like, you know, takes any parameters, right? And we know that it says right here, it takes a parameter at times. So we just wanna go ahead and put that in the parentheses. And now we wanna, you know, read, read what the, purpose of this function is, which is to return the number of queens drawn when drawing cards from a standard 52 card deck times times. Um, a standard deck includes these, you know, 52 cards. We have four suits uh, with 13 possible values each. When drawing, draw with replacement. So what the point of this whole function is, and you can even write a comment, right, explaining what the purpose is, is that you basically count the number of queens drawn when drawing um, from deck of cards times times right so if i keep picking up cards um a times number of times and the times is like the parameter so it's like whatever value is passed into the function so if i if times equals 100, let's say I'm drawing 100 cards, right? So the point of times is that it can be any number, you know, that can be decided by the user or whoever is using this program, right? So if I basically draw from a deck of cards times times, how many queens am I going to end up getting, right? And remember, this is drawing with replacement. So every time I pick up a card, I can put it back in the deck. And basically, we want to count how many um, queens we get in, in that total um, you know, number of draws that, that we basically have, which is defined by the parameter times. So if you're familiar with simulations, then this is gonna be pretty easy. If you're not familiar with simulations or you know, random integers, then I would recommend watching the videos on those so you can kind of get um, you know, familiar with how to do those in Python. But over here, we basically wanna go ahead and first we want to have our for loop, right? Because this is the pretty much very similar as a simulation question, except we're not returning a data frame. We're just returning the specific number of queens that we got. So there's basically going to be, you can say, um, honestly, just like two steps here, right? The first step is going to have be like a for loop, which iterates times times, right? Which represents picking up a card. You can think of this as um, one iteration represents one simulation of drawing a card from a deck of cards, except within that simulation, we're not going to be appending the result to a data frame like we normally do in previous simulation questions. Here we're just going to be seeing if that card we picked is a queen, and if it is, um, that's going to kind of lead us to our second step. If the card we picked is a queen, then we want to have some sort of total aggregator, like total count that basically keeps track of how many queens we have. We And if we picked a queen, then we just want to increment that count. Um, so if the card is a queen, then increment our, our count, um, you know, aggregate variable, right? And then at the end, you just want to go ahead and return that count. So it's honestly pretty simple. And within that for loop, of course, we're going to have to pick a queen, right? And Or sorry, pick a card. And how do we randomly simulate picking a card? Well, we can use the random function, right? So randomly pick a card. Um, and here we'll use the random.randint function. And there's a lot of different ways to do this uh, type of you know, to write this program. But uh, here I'll just be kind of discussing the one way that came to my mind, right? A lot of other ways can be uh, correct. They, they may not be the most efficient. My way may not be the most efficient, but you know, that's kind of the, I guess the beauty of programming, right? Is that you can have a bunch of different solutions that are advantageous in different situations, right? So let's go ahead and get started. So when we have our for loop, we just wanna write for i in range but what is, what is the number of times we're going to be, you know, doing our simulation? How many cards are we picking? Well, that is defined 
by this parameter here called times. So I just want to put for i in range times, right? Um, and that represents that, you know, we're picking a card times times, right? That's like the, the number of simulations that we're doing, right? So once we're inside this for loop, we want to go ahead and randomly pick a card, right? We are picking a card from a standard 52 card deck. So I'm going to assign a card, which is equal to random.randint1,52, right? That's like kind of the most common way of, in Python, just randomly picking a card. Now we want to uh, do step two if the card we picked is a clean increment count. Well, there's two um, things we need to do before we kind of reach this, um, reach this step. One is to define our aggregate count variable, right? And I want you to realize that where should we define our count variable, right? Our count variable, which is like a result, which is the number of queens that we picked, represents the total number of queens we picked out of all their simulations, right? Where uh, do you think we should you know, define or uh, define this aggregator variable, right? Well, it should be in the very beginning of the function. So I can call this count or I can call it num queens. I can call it any variable I want, but this is basically going to be representing how many queens that I picked in total. And right now I want to initialize it to zero, right? But once we enter within the for loop, then we're going to, uh, you know, increment it so it can actually have a value. And that's why it's important to realize that the num queens actually should not be defined within the for loop. This is a common mistake that a lot of students make. This num queens, whatever aggregator variable you have, whatever variable you're storing your result in, should be defined in the beginning of the function in this situation here, because um, within the for loop, it resets every single time, right? So if we have num queens equals to zero inside our for loop, then every single iteration, it's gonna keep resetting to zero, right? And that's not what we want. We want it to store our total number of queens that we got. So um, we wanna define that in the very beginning of the function. And then now we get to step two. If the card we picked is a queen, increment this count, um, I'll call it num queens variable, right? So, if the card is a queen now now this is um you know there's a lot of flexibility here right how do we determine whether the card we picked is a queen well if we have a card one through 52 um let's let us say that cards one through four represent queens and and the rest of the cards can be uh, you know the rest of the cards in the deck right so if we decide cards um, numbers one, two, three, four to represent all the queens in my deck, for example, a one can represent queen of hearts, two is a queen of clubs, three queen of spades, four queen of diamonds, then to determine whether the card we picked as a queen, we just want to make sure this random number is less than or equal to four, right? It can be either one, two, three, or four. And if it is less than or equal to four, that means we picked a queen. So there's different ways to do this, right? You can have your queens be from, um, let's say, 48 to 52. Um, you can have a condition representing that. If you want your queens to be different numbers, which I wouldn't really recommend, you're going to have a bunch of or statements saying that my number can be one or my number can be four or my number can be eight, right? So I think the most straightforward way is to basically assign numbers one through four to be queens within your deck of cards. Um, and then the rest are, you know, basically the rest of the deck. And to determine if it's a queen, we just have, if my card that I picked, if that number that I got from my random number generator, if that number is less than or equal to four, that means we picked a queen. So we're going to have to increment our num queens variable. And how do we do that? Well, it's just going to be num queens plus equals one. So, you know, we uh, picked a we pick a card if that card is a queen meaning if that number is less than or equal to four then we increment our count and finally we want to return our count now i want you to think that should our um num queens should returning that be inside the for loop or outside well when and you can pause the video to think about this but when we are returning a um 
the final num queens variable, we want to be done with all of our simulations first, right? We want to go through all of the simulations, and after we've picked all the cards, after we've recorded all the queens, then finally at the very end, we want to return the count. So outside of the for loop, just at the very end of the function, we want to return num queens. And and that's basically your function, right? Oops. Um, and you know, I something that I would really recommend is testing your function, right? So if I write draw queens, if I call my function um, at the very end, right after I've defined it, it's not indented or anything, so it's outside of that function scope. But if I write draw queens and let's say I don't know 100, then I should get a um, you know, pretty decent number for the number of queens that I got, right? So I want to go ahead and run this and it will say seven, right? If I got a number that was maybe one or maybe um, 100, right, that kind of lets you know that, okay, one, does my function make sense? And two, if there's any syntax errors, you can actually catch it by calling the function itself. So that's something to be aware of. And that's, um, you know, kind of best practice. I would, I would recommend you do that in your test as well. So, um, you know, this is our, our function, right? First, we define the function. Then we define our um, aggregator, that count variable, to, which we uh, use to keep track of the number of queens. Then we go ahead and iterate through our for loop times times, right, which is that parameter. Then we randomly pick a card. If that card number is less than or equal to four, which we designated as queens, then we increment our count variable. And finally, we return our count variable that is outside of the for loop. So that's basically it. Um, if I submit my code, that's all right. Um, so I hope this video was helpful. Right? If you have any questions, let me know. And I'll see you next time. Bye.